Hey there warriors, wanted to show you exactly which VS Code extensions I'm using, which are helping me, and they can potentially help you on your projects. Let's go! Welcome to my VS Code warriors, while I'm showing you my extensions, I'm going to test each one of them directly into my textual games project. Let's go with the first one, so we are going to open our extensions tab, and here the first one is Console Ninja. This one is awesome. This one is displaying all console logs directly inside your VS Code. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to go to my page and here I can just put in console log org dev and I'm automatically, I'm currently in Next.js so when I save it's automatically, it's open in my browser. So it's automatically console logging everything inside. And it doesn't need to be only string. You can also console log your entire object or state in this case. And this one is really, really great because you don't need to go to your browser. You can see everything that you are getting from the API or whatever you need directly inside your VS Code. Next one is .env. It's nothing special. It's just highlighting all the syntax inside the environment files. So if we go to my environment example, you can see just a little bit different color and also same for the comment. So that one is just to make environment files more readable. Next, ES7 React, Redux, GraphQL, React Native Snippets. So this one basically just contains a bunch of snippets which you can use for React or for whatever you need. So to test this one out, if we go to our page, delete everything and go imp, it's going to give us automatically the import and it's going to put in here the import. And if we check out here again, they have a bunch of snippets which you can use. This is uh, useful if you if you're building a lot of files and you're doing a lot of from scratch components or something like that. And next one is ESLint. That's probably the most useful extension of them all. So ESLint is displaying all the TypeScript errors directly inside your VS Code. Let me show you that one. So here, for example, in my, let's say, fetch data, we need to have input story. So here, if we use something else, we use org string and we put that one instead of our story. Oops. So orc, it is going to say, argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type story. And this is really, really useful when you are coding and you see if you did something wrong with your type, if you put like this instead of an object, a string, and or whatever you can do, and you don't need to save everything and then go and type in npm lint or to check later on live code or something like that on, on production. So this one is extremely useful. Next one, GitHub team. Uh, this is just the, the pack of code teams. If you're interested in that, you can go and I'm checking the teams here let me show you yeah so here i have a bunch of github teams you can just change them and this one i really liked it look looked nice so i'm using their team uh, where is it now color team i think mine was github dark default i think yes that's the one so you can download a bunch of teams. It doesn't need to be GitHub team extension. You have really a lot of them that are really cool. Next up, Git Lens Git Supercharged. This one is also really, really powerful, especially if you're working in bigger teams. I mean, if it's only two developers, it's also useful. Only maybe if you're working alone, like me on this project, it's not that useful. So what's the point of this extension is when I press here, I got when was this commit and what else it contained. So here we can track our 
commit message and everything and changes and also this one is really useful for me and I use this really a lot to see exactly which changes happened. So you can go here, split it to the right and here I can use the old file and then you compare exactly what happened in that commit and this one is really really useful. Imagine you're like, who the hell plays this crappy code here and you press and you see, oh, it's me. <laughs> I mean, it's a great extension, try it out. Next one is HTML CSS support. So I'm not using this one that much lately because I'm always using Tailwind in my latest projects, but this one basically is auto-suggesting your classes if you have them in your CSS. So when you start writing class, it will auto-suggest your like, whatever the class name you have that are custom. And next one is Prettier Code Formatter. So this one is by default on my Visual Studio code set here. So you can here say format document width and here I'm using Prettier as default. You can set here your configure default formatter and there I placed Prettier. So now whenever I save, so here, then it's automatically reformatting it with Prettier. Next one is really cool. It's called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. It's basically giving us the list of all Tailwind classes and it's much easier to work like that. So when you create a div and I create a class name and start typing flex, it is going to give me flex, then maybe flex column. It's giving me everything. Then I don't know all the colors from my head. So I can start writing background and then I see here whatever color I need and I just press it and I have everything here directly from the IntelliSense. Let's see what's next. Oh, toggle quotes. This one is small but sweet. So here I'm holding my command key or control if you're on Windows or Linux. And when you press your quote, you're automatically changing the type of quote on your string. We can try it here. So here, if I press command and I press quotes, I'm changing to single quote, then press again, I'm changing to ticks and then again to double quotes. And this one proved to be really useful, especially if you want to do something dynamically. So if I want to change to, to put some dynamic content inside my class, I just change to ticks fast like this. I add my brackets and now I can just add here now some variable or whatever. What's next? The VS Code icons. Yes, this one is also really nice. It's just changing here when you go to your files, it's changing the icon of your file ba based on your extension. So you see here for the JS, it's giving us the JavaScript extension. If I go to my app, and you see the TSX, it's the React icon. And here for TS, it's TypeScript, CSS, here is CSS3 and etc etc so it's just to make it visually easier for you to read which files do you have in your structure let's see what is next after vs code icons my favorite one is vs code pets so i intentionally hid it here from you so you don't see it in the beginning but i always have this opened and here you can see my cat is always jumping around, making my coding experience a little bit more fun. Also, one subscriber said that Rocky is his favorite, so I wanted to show you Rocky. So Rocky, we can call him just Rock. And here he is. Rocky is not a very dynamic pet, but he's okay. Try VS Code pets, they're really interesting. I wanted even to write a message to creators to create an org, but I don't know, maybe I'll do it. And let's see what 
else do we have here? Oh, and the last one, that's Rapid, Rapid API. So this one currently is disabled because I'm not testing APIs that much, but this is basically the Postman inside the VS Code. I mean, like Postman, it's not Postman, it's not from the same company, but it's something similar. You can just put in the URLs from your API and you're getting the response. You can also do the same thing like in Postman to import, how to export, import your JSON from your APIs. So you can try it out. It's, uh, it's okay if you're doing a lot of API testing for your front end part. It's a cool extension. You can try it out. I see it doesn't have many downloads. I don't know why, but you can test it out. If you like it, keep it. I hope this was helpful to you, warriors. If you have any more extension that you think that I should know about, just put it in the comment below. I'll try it out and I'll tell you if it was helpful for me or not. And don't forget to subscribe, warriors. Until next time, farewell.